Hey guys, welcome to Through the Bible Verse by Verse, a plain and simple study of the entire Bible, book by book, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse. We are in Genesis chapter 19, and this is, well, it's a very famous chapter because this is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And let me say this, because one of the problems that we, we see with the story of Sodom and Gomorrah and it's become a byline it's be, you know it's, it is we have laws that are named Sodom now the reason why it is named Sodom is because of the homosexuality that's going to be featured here but let me say that the, the, the destruction of Sodom and I did read this in um, the reason God judged Sodom and Gomorrah and this is in Ezekiel um, that he said that it was their gross sin in other words what we see with Sodom and Gomorrah is and, and the reason why the, the, it's going to be pictured this way or told the story is going to be told this way is we're seeing how bad sin can get but it was never meant to it was never meant to kind of set precedence. In other words, you look at the, 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 the homosexuality that's going to be featured here, and then you, we have certain conservative Christians forever who have made that the story instead of the fact that what made them, what brought them to this judgment was the sin their gross rebellion against God right they're turning away from God and when you turn away from God there's no restraint um, there is another story I'm not going to read it but it's in Judges 19 that tells the same story there was a man in fact the whole book of Judges really tells how bad Israel becomes right I just they just become bad <clears throat> so, um, and this is this is always some 400 years after the law, after they enter the promised land. You see how bad they become. And so this story is told towards the in Judges 19. A a an Israelite man, a Benjamin, I think um, he he was um, not a Benjamite. He went to a Benjamite city. Uh, he was a man of Ephraim. Okay, but he he, he travels to this city. And he, to pick up his concubine who ran away from him. So as he's traveling back through this city, he didn't want to stop in this one town. He figured, let me go to the, the, the Israelites' town. And he arrives in uh, what is now would have been Jerusalem. And when he arrives there, these men come out. Um, the city was Jebusite city, okay. <coughs> and when he comes out, he um, they 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 did the same you see almost the same story unfolds that unfolded as we're going to read here that the men of the city however in other words they wasn't facing angels but the men of the city approached him and said hey bring that man out so we can have sex with him the man come out and go look he's my guest you know so the man came out and go look take my concubine they take the concubine and they abuse her all night until she's dead here's my point so we the the, the 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 cultural and the political ramifications of what became known as Sodom and Gomorrah has been, I think, a misrepresentation of what Scripture was saying. In other words, it was really telling us how bad sin can get. It, it's the same uh, that we're going to read when Moses comes down from the mountain when they make the golden calf. The, the scene that Moses saw when they came down from the golden calf was um, a buck wild, adulterous, orgy, debauchery, everything you, everything under the sun, under the and, and bestiality, right? Just uh, everything was going on there. That's what Moses saw, and that's how bad sin can get. That's the, and that was the whole point of the message. All right, so let's um, let's get into it. It said two angels entered Sodom, 
in the evening as Lot was sitting at Sodom's gate. So again, we see Sodom back. He's an intricate part of the town. And doing in, in these days, the, 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 the town's gate was where all of the elders, all of the men came. You know, they hung out, they talked, but they also conducted city business. So we see Sodom here is an integral part of the city. When Lot saw them, he got up to meet them. He bowed with his face to the ground and said, My lords, turn aside to your servant's house. Wash your feet and spend the night. Then you can get up early and go your way. No, they said. Now remember, these are the two angels. We would rather spend the night in the in, in the square. But he urged them so strongly that they followed him and went into his house. He prepared a feast and baked unleavened bread for them and they ate. So again, these are angels. Which, again, I can't explain the whole object of this. But of course, we're talking about angel ophanies as they're called in theological terms. They take on the, the, the form of human. So they have the appearance of it, but they were an actual human, even though they, they did eat here. All right. Verse 4. Before they went to bed, the men of the city of Sodom, both young and old, the whole, the whole population surrounded the house. And they called out and said, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Send them out here so we can have sex with them. A lot went out to them at the entrance and shut the door behind him. He said, don't do this evil, my brothers. Right? Look, I have two daughters who haven't had sexual relations with a man. I will bring them out to you and you can do whatever you want to them. However, do not do anything to these men because they have come under my protection of my roof. Now again, let me just remind you, we're seeing how bad sin is. That here you have a town. All of the men show up. And they, he has two daughters, virgin daughters, that apparently no one's interested in. But he shows up and he offers them. Now, the story I quoted to you earlier in um, Judges 19, those men actually took the woman and abused her. Um, but we, we again, we, we see the, again, the total depravity here. The fact that he offered his daughters and cared nothing about it. Like, hey, take my daughters. Right? That's just as bad. And we're also going to see, again, that women were then valued during this time. So, yeah, you're going to see, as the Bible is telling the story, that's the reality of it. You know, take my daughter, <laughs> do whatever you want with her, right? It's like, wow. Um, verse 9, get out of the way, they said, adding, this one came here as a foreigner. But he's acting like a judge. Now we'll do more harm to you than to them. And they pressured, they put they put pressure on Lot and came to break down the door. But the angels reached out, brought Lot into the house with them and shut the door. They struck the men who were at the entrance of the house, both young and old, with a blinding light so that they were not able to find the entrance. Then the angel said, um, to Lot, do you have anyone else here? A son-in-law, your sons, daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you. Get them out of this place, for we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against the people is so great before the Lord that the Lord has sent us here to destroy it. Now one thing that's Kind of interesting is that notice and I want to say this in terms of what righteousness is that he says to them if you have anyone that belongs to you they would be saved because of Lot's righteousness and remember Lot was saved they were going to be spared because of Abraham's righteousness that he prayed 
in the previous chapter. Okay. Um, oh, that's not what I want. I want 12. Okay, let me find this. Verse 14. So Lot uh, went out and spoke to his sons in laws who were going to marry his daughters. Now, this probably could have been either, probably some kind of political marriage. They married oftentimes for political reasons. So he said, um, get up, he said, get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. At daybreak, the angels urged Lot on, get up, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. You will be swept away, uh, or you will be swept away in the punishment of the city. But he hesitated because... Um, let me see here. Does yeah. Oh yeah. Let me go on. Um, verse sixteen. But he hesitated because of the Lord's compassion for him. The man grabbed his hands, his wife's hands, and the hands of the two daughters, and they brought him out and left them outside of the city. And as soon as the angels got them outside of this outside, one of them said, "Run for your lives." Do not look back. Don't stop anywhere on the plane. Rush to the mountains or you'll be swept away. Now, one interesting thing here uh, is that um, um, notice how they were hesitating. Even though Lot knew, remember he proclaimed to his sons-in-law that he was, that God was going to destroy the city. He Now he's hesitating. And again, notice the mercy of God. The mercy of God that he grabs him and drags him out of the city. Okay? Drags him out of the city. Verse 19. So he tells them, run to the mountain. Now, this is an interesting exchange. I want you to see this. Listen to this. So the angels tell them, run to the mountains. Verse 18. But Lot said to them, no, my lords, please. Your servants have indeed found favor in your eyes, and you have shown me great kindness by saving my life. But I can't run to the mountains. The disaster will overtake me, and I will die. How do you know this, Lot? Right? How do you know this? He's, he's, see, Lot is being typical Lot, which got him in this trouble in the first place. Verse 20, look, this town is close enough for me to run to. It is a small place, but let me go there. It is only a small place, so there I can survive. Verse 21, all right, he said to him. And he said to him, I'm sorry, all right, I'll grant your request. But this matter, about this matter too, and will not demolish the town you mentioned. Hurry up, run there, for I cannot do anything until you get there. Um, and the name of the city was Zor. Now we saw Zor before. And we also see that Zor is also a wicked place. It is just as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah. But notice it is spared because Lot is going to go there. Uh, one of the things we should never ever, and I said it before in, in 18, we should never underestimate how God, the, the prayers of the righteous avails much. That's why it is kind of ridiculous when you see people, um, you know, predicting America's doom you know are there righteous people there um, verse 23 the sun had not risen over the land when Lot reached Zor now one other thing is notice he said I, that, that God was waiting for Lot to be saved um, here is another thought to consider because and, and we're not going to get into it obviously in this study but the question becomes, do God judge the righteous with the wicked? I say that for this reason here, uh, with the great debate on whether or not if the church is going to go through the great tribulation period in Revelation. That's why I say that. Here is a good example of God judging this metropolitan area expressly because of their sin, but he gets the righteous out. And even waits until the righteous is safe before he destroys the city. 
So to me, the symbolism here is just great. Like I said, that's a whole other discussion, <clears throat> you know, about, you know, will the church go through the tribulation period. But that's, this is a good example of, to me of why it won't happen. But all right, I digress. Verse 23, the sun had not risen over the land when Lot reached Zor. Then out of the sky, the Lord rained down sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord. He demolished these cities, the entire plain, all the inhabitants of the cities, and whatever, whatever grew on the ground. But his wife looked back and became a pillar of salt. Early in the morning, Abram went to the place. Now, uh, let me just stop here, quickly mention. Notice he said she looked back. And oftentimes people kind of wonder what exactly happened when she looked back. Did she stop or, you know, but all he says here is she looked back. Here is the thing. She was told not to look back as they were moving. She was told not to look back. And so some kind of way she got caught up in the, the downpour of the sulfur. Okay. Verse 27, early in the morning, <clears throat> Abram went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down towards Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of the plain, and he saw the smoke was going up from the land like the smoke of a furnace. So it was when God destroyed the cities, noted the term, cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham and brought Lot out of the out of the middle of the upheaval when he demolished his cities where the land where, where Lot had lived. Um, so the one thing I thought I wanted to see right here. Sometimes people ask the question why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? I say because he wanted because of the judgment that's why let me say this when it comes to judgment we start off all man from Adam starts off deserving judgment so, so you start with that point and then you work your way back from mercy okay so understand that from mercy and we even see it when Lot's wife looked back. The mercy was he got you out of the city. So the question for the for the judgment against Lot's wife was, why did you look back when God told you not to? You look back, she got caught up in the judgment. Okay, so, um, and again, this was a metropolitan area. So there are a few cities that got, that, that received this judgment here. Now this story is even more bizarre as we go on. Um, it says, um, verse 30, it says, Lot departed from Zor and lived in the mountains along with his two daughters because he was afraid to live in Zor. Did not the angel tell him to go to the mountains at first? See, when we, Lot was always one, in a sense, with disobedience or lived in his flesh, which is why he's now living in this circumstances now. Why he's now again lost all of his wealth because it's now destroyed in, in the judgment. Lot is that Christian that doesn't obey the word of God, doesn't follow the word of God. But God was merciful to him because of Abraham. But this story gets bizarre here. I'm going to go over it just a little bit because this story here, I'll finish out the chapter, but this story is a little bizarre. So it says, Lot departed from Zor and lived in the mountains along with his two daughters because he was afraid to live in Zor. Instead, he and his two daughters lived in the cage. The firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man in the land to sleep with us as the custom of the land. Come, let us get our father to drink wine so that we can sleep with him and preserve our father's line. So they got their father to drink wine that night, and the firstborn came and slept with his father. He did not know when she lay down and when she got up the next day. The firstborn said to the younger, Look, I slept with my father last night. Let's get him drunk. Let him to get drink let, let's let him get drink wine again. Tonight you can sleep with him. And we can preserve our father's line. And that night they got their father to drink wine. 
And the younger went in to sleep with him. He did not know when she lay down and when she got up. So both of the daughters became pregnant by their father. The firstborn gave the firstborn gave birth to a son named Moab, and we're going to become very familiar with Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger also gave birth to the son, and she named him Benami. Uh, uh, he is the father of the Amorites to today. So two wicked things we're going to see later on. But Moab is going to be very interesting because Ruth will come out of Boab. But now you may think, ooh, right? But again, remember, we're looking at how bad sin is during this time, right? It, how From Adam, how bad sin is. Um, this actually would become a law, however. Uh, the, the kind of raising up it's going to be incorporated we're going to see it later on with Judah we're going to see it incorporated into the law how that if a man dies and doesn't have seed um, that the brother is going to come in right the, the next brother in line will come in sleep with the widow and then raise up a family name don't know where it come from it will be incorporated into the law this is a perversion of that right in other words their whole thing is our line is free and getting ready to be, be cut off. Yeah, it was a perversion of it. But it also shows the result of living among, among wicked people. All right, guys, that is the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay, so like I say, yeah, ooh, but all right, guys, um, chapter uh, 21 in the next study. I'll see you then.